tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Matt Fulcheron, Robin Shaw, Dave Temple, Greg Rogel. This week's host, Daryl Hannah. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Daryl Hammond! Uh, tell him to be quiet. The guy's yelling at me over there. Say this shit over here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Gotham Comedy Live, Access TV. It's a live show. There are about a million people watching, listening to you right now, and me, live. So here comes some filthy shit. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know if they said in the credits, I wrote a book last year that's a New York Times bestseller called uh, God, If You're Not Up There, I'm Fucked. Um, <laughs> it's true, it is. That's the name of the book. Uh, Thanks to Dr. Phil, I guess, because the bookstores wouldn't carry it. <laughs> but now that I have a million people watching me live, I think I'd like to talk about it. Um, of course, you know, the first part of the book is about absinthe. Does anyone know what absinthe is? Yeah? If you don't know what it is, it's alcohol and LSD. <laughs> you get drunk and you hallucinate. So I wrote four chapters on that. I have a little experience in that area. How do you know when you've had too much absinthe? These are all true stories, by the way. I've never actually, I've never actually written a joke. I just tell stories about how fucked up I am <laughs> and the weird stuff I've done. How do you know when you've had too much absinthe? Uh, when you're being tapped on the shoulder by a cop reminding you you're in the middle of a conversation? <laughs> when you're at a donkey show in Tijuana <laughs> and you're facing the audience? These are all autobiographical. <laughs> but the real way to know when you've had too much absinthe, when you're having such a hard time finding your way home, you have to park across the street from Domino's, order a pizza to your house, and then follow their truck. <laughs> you know you've had too much absinthe to drink. That's too much drinking. I, uh, I, uh, I played uh, President Clinton on Saturday Night Live um, for 14 years, and a lot of the book is about how much he uh, uh, dominated my life um, and how obsessed the world was uh, with him and not with me. <laughs> um, I'll just give you a couple of true stories here. When I was getting my colonoscopy, <clears throat> No, I see some yo young people here think home invasion. <laughs> Stuff you never thought would happen, but oh, now it's happening. Oh, mama, it's going on for too long. <clears throat> yes, I was getting a colonoscopy, and uh, I was pretty scared. That part of my body's, I think, been used for uh, normal egress and ingress. Uh, you know, the in and out kind of thing. Nothing steel. Um, nothing uh, with electricity in it. <laughs> nothing with a camera in it. And it was like getting ready to touch my bum, right? I mean, I don't know how else to call it. But it was going to touch me there. And just the second it touched... And I was scared as shit, too, man. If you've never been penetrated thusly... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I was scared. Um, so it, it, the second it touched my, me there... I actually went like this, I went, huh? <laughs> Which is so, so debilitating, you know? I've always thought of myself as kind of a tough guy. And then I went, huh? <laughs> Me there. I actually went like this, I went, huh? <laughs> Which is so, so debilitating, you know. I've always thought of myself as kind of a tough guy. And then I went, 
the second I made that sound, the anesthesiologist leaned into me and went, what would Clinton say? I said, he would say, what is a nice girl like you? <laughs> Doing in a place like that. <laughs> you know, it sucks being an average dude and playing this guy that Chicks love. I mean, I, I mean, people that are cr go crazy over this guy. And I, I, I'll give you another true, absolutely true story. I was at Iowa State University and uh, did a show. And after the show, a co-ed followed me to my car and said exactly like this, Mr. Hammond, <laughs> I will so show you my breasts if you talk like President Clinton for me. And I had never heard anyone talk like that. <laughs> so I said, young lady, could you please say that again? Just like, she said, I will so show you my breath. <laughs> if you will talk like Bill Clinton for me. <clears throat> I said, oh God. I said, young lady, that's so sick. <laughs> that is so sick. <laughs> I wish I were a better person, but I'm not. <laughs> I, uh, I'm trying to pick which stories to tell. Oh, let me tell you about when I met him. Um, listen, this guy is, uh, whoa. I mean, I'm 5'11", I'm right? He's a lot taller um, than me. First of all, I'd never been in the Oval Office, and I graduated college with a 2.1 average. <laughs> all right, and that was with cheating. Like, I was part of an independent study program to determine if you drink a fifth of gin a day every day for five years, you know, would it affect your grades? And, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> but I remember when I walked to the Oval Office, I was awestruck, and I thought to myself, you know, boy, I bet no president of the United States will ever walk in this office that graduated with a 2.1. <laughs> and a couple years later, that turned out to be wrong. <laughs> No. So I feel good about, I feel very good about that. Um, I, 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 let me just say how, what it was like to meet him. First of all, you know how this is like your personal space and you don't want let people get in here? Like he gets right in there. <laughs> like I walked, President Clinton, I walked in the room and he's standing there eating ham. And he really looked good eating ham. <laughs> like, I was like, maybe that's how you're supposed to eat ham. Because he looked good. He's, you know, I was like. <laughs> and you think you're going to say something smart the first time you meet a president, but I don't know if you ever do. I mean, like, you know how when that, the, the thought is rolling off your tongue and your brain's looking at it going, I didn't authorize that. <laughs> I would never say fucking stupid shit like that. Like, he, he came up to me, and he's like standing right here, and I, I got really scared. I couldn't think of shit to say. But my mouth said, thank you for my house. I couldn't think, I was like, I mean, that was sincere. I was sincere, right? I was being sincere. And he looked down at me, and he goes, do you know what? I make the headlines, but you, you turn them into gold. <laughs> and I almost said, all right, I'll fuck you. Um, because no one has ever talked to me like that. In my whole life, no one has ever talked to me like that before. I'm not gay, but I don't pretty sure you don't have to be for this. Um, yeah, welcome to New York City for those of you from out of town. I, uh, 
It's quite a town. I uh, flew in here today from New Orleans, where I live now, yeah. And, uh, so, you know, something always happens. You know, the airports are so sophisticated at security now. I mean, they're so good at it. I mean, the, the changes they've made since 9-11, the random foot check, the butt check. <laughs> Here's my dick. Here's my ass. Okay, I thought that was all brilliant. But what really makes me feel <laughs> safe is that sign at the checkpoint that says, no guns or explosives past this point. <laughs> I mean, I have seen like five terrorists this year just walk in and go, fuck. <laughs> no, 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 get, get back in the van, get back in the van. There is a sign now. All right, everybody ready to start? We are going to go to a commercial. We'll be right back with Gotham Comedy Live. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Matt Fultron is taking the stage when we return. Gotham Comedy Live on Access TV. First comic tonight, very funny gentleman who has been seen on Comedy Central Presents. Here's Matt Fulcheron. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right, right thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. I am so fat on live TV right now. Look at that, that stomach just trying to be a star. Fuck that. Can we edit that out? I am uh, I'm visiting from Southern California, and uh, yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. I miss my, I miss my medical marijuana. Uh, we're going through the phase in history in California right now where we're pretending like marijuana is medicine. Uh, we wink at each other when we buy it. We pretend like it's healthy. Is it healthy? Yeah. Mm. It's a lot of energy for pot smokers, but I'll take it. I just got up here. It might be healthy. Maybe, well, maybe if you eat it. Is anything you smoke ever good for you? Is your doctor ever like, I want you to go home, I want you to get some lettuce, get some chives, get some spinach? Dry it out, roll it up in a piece of paper.